it's hot enough for spontaneous fires to break out. Makes me think this planet is in the middle of a massive change. Hello everyone, Thranx is here, and welcome back to No Man's Sky. In the last episode, we had made it to the system Fire 145, the 80s, uh, discovered by Nuts, and it appears that um, Nuts has indeed fully explored this system and recently uploaded. Well, we're going to keep our base on the Fissures of Light, uh, but I think it's time we move on to another system. Now, I have started playing this game... Uh, a bit off-camera, mostly doing multiplayer gameplay with the Thranxians, and what we did was some derelict freighters. So, I ended up with uh, some more repair kits. Um, I've already kind of processed most of the things that I've obtained, um, although not all of our slime, which we're going to go ahead and actually process now. Um... Uh, but one of the things that we got that I waited to show is we have additional storage. We got two, so we got two freighter bulkheads, and the question is where? Oh, where do we want to put these things? I'm I'm kind of thinking. I think really what we need is storage. The freighter always needs more storage. Uh, right now I have frigates out on an exp on expeditions, um, but I think we're going to go one and two, and we're just going to slowly but surely get our freighter maxed out. And once we have our storage maxed out and our technology maxed out, then we'll start hunting um, the S-Class freighter modules, and then we'll actually build on our freighter get it where it's going. Uh, but as you know, if you're a fan of the series, I'm in no rush. These things, they they generally take time. They really do. And if you, if you rush to the end, then that's a sure way to find out that it's, uh, you know, it's just cornflakes. Um, oh, and it looks like the uh, warp cell does not fully fill up the freighter hyperdrive anymore like it used to. Oh, my goodness. Changes, changes. But we have all these artifacts. Now, I was saving these artifacts to interact with... Why did my delicate beetles get taken down out of yellow status now their their money has oh, they were worth so much more I turned in I turned okay so uh, what I'm what I'm getting from this we're just gonna sell all these is that the historical artifacts and the turning in of historical artifacts are just I don't want to say they're bugged but the Atlas is not quite sure what it's trying to do with them, so we're just going to sell them. I, uh, I don't want to keep... I don't want to keep trying to turn them in and figuring out that it's all just more issues. So what we'll do is we'll clear our freighter inventory. We will at some point do some more uh, multiplayer derelict freighters. They were pretty fun. I will say they've upgraded their difficulty a little bit. Nothing cosmic. But enough to say... Ugh, that doesn't work for some reason. So for some reason, if you put... I've noticed that. If you put a hypercore in the hyperdrive, but you do it from... But you do it from without putting it somewhere else first. It doesn't have the same effect. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. But anyways, we're going to leave this system. And actually travel to a different one. All of these wonderful systems. Now, where have... Where can we go? Fire 1, 69 Origins. A Berus where we've been. How have we been there, but it's not labeled properly? 
that's interesting. But where's a place that has not been? There we go. Completely undiscovered system. And what looks like three, four planets. Okay. Very good. Let's travel. What I can say, honestly, I don't know if I can continue hearing this. I, I just, I don't. Even though we might lose our materials in a refiner here in our freighter, I, I don't know if I can just listen to that. I liked it quietly when it just, whoa, whoa, whoa. They fixed it? Our stuff is here? How is this ta- Whoa, I'm... I'm astounded. Like I'm well and truly astounded. That's fun. Well then, goodness. That is, that is wonderful news. Although I have to say, with the uh, portable refiner being loud and being unable to stop it, I i mean, maybe it's a petty thing to throw a rock at. I don't know if I'm going to use it much um, anymore. It's just the way it goes. What is this? Oh, I was like, why am I seeing arcing electricity in here? Can we buy some drop pod coordinate data 54? <laughs> what? What, what, what? Is that? Well, goodness. I'm tempted to buy it all up, but yeah, I don't think I don't think so. So I ended up giving a lot of my drop pod, all of my drop pod coordinate data to um, Eusalus's or Rice Cream Boy, but they um, the, and they and they did need some inventory space. But part of what I've realized, and part of it I I had completely forgotten about. Um, is that you can scan for drop pod data once you put a signal booster on your exocraft, and you can actually get that pretty quick. So the the need for drop pod uh, coordinate data actually drops off much faster than I uh, than I remembered. Anyways, so as we get to this system and we look, we can see that actually two of the planets have been discovered by Laughing Monkey, even though the system was not named. Yeah, it's not not named with the uh, the fire one. Um, modifier showing that it's been uh, discovered, which is okay. It's not the end of the world. Um, but there are still two unexplored planets in this system, and we're not going to leave a single planet undiscovered in the Ringsian Conflagration. So, our mission is to explore and chart pretty much every unknown planet in our system and our neighboring systems, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So we have an Arctic planet, with aggressive sentinels, but it's been discovered. And then we have, yep, the Paradise Planet's been discovered. But the one behind it, um, is that, is that a photo I see? We call that one uh, coming in for landing, maybe? Uh -huh. I like that pretty slick. So we'll just duck underneath the Relentless here, and we'll punch it right around the tropical planet here, and we find, ah, undiscovered planet. Another tropical planet. Oh, we have a incoming trade frequency. That's a neat looking ship. Let's go ahead and see what they need. 
something, lost their something. Trade examines my cargo data. They try to appear calm, but they do a poor job. They cannot hide just how keen they are to do a deal. Um, well, what do you got? I mean, tritium? Yeah, a little bit of tritium. Never hurt anybody. I'll take that. Sure. But of course. So this looks like, it says it's a tropical planet, but my oh my, it does not appear to be a typical tropical planet, does it? Hmm? Is that... Maybe we need to break more over to the sun side of the Terminator, the day side of the planet, because that just... That just appears to be quite a stormy planet here. So what do we have? We have like this red, red and gray sort of, how interesting. What's, what, what are we dealing with down here? And the atmosphere is so thick. It's quite difficult to make it out. Um, are we... we are kind of in the sunset realm. So maybe we could chase the, uh, we could chase the local star a little bit. Staying in the, uh, tropopause here, maybe. Maybe get a little bit in the low orbit. That seems like a, a photo opportunity, I think. Yeah, that's... Definitely a red and gray sort of I'm not sure. A bit unusual. For a paradise planet? Yeah, a little bit. Let's okay, let's head on down. Oh, look at these ridge lines. Like like spines. Just like long lines of... Oh, interesting. And this is a paradise planet? Wow. It's very red. A little rocky... I guess this isn't really sunset. This is the sky. The daytime sky is just like this. Let's... Let's make land... Let's go ahead and make landfall here. We'll land. We're losing the local star a little bit behind the mountain. Mostly calm weather. Oh, how fun is that? No, I think we fit better in the in the in the nook of the valley there a little bit. Very interesting. What have we here? The antenna? Mm. I wouldn't mind looking for a monolith, but... The Gorgon encampment. Oh my. I still think the biggest bang for our buck is damaged machinery as far as nanites in general and of course modules as well oh look at that speaking of monolith hello let's go yeah very nice Done as if by order. Okay, so we shall learn a little bit more about the Viking, both their language and some discovery of their history. Viking word for forgive. Whoa! Is that the circle of life happening right in front of our eyes? That is a predator chasing. chasing prey. All right. I would like to avoid a confrontation if we can. Not that I'm afraid of confrontation, but just 
I'm trying to adopt more of a don't don't interfere with the local ecosystem if we can help it. Oh, we have a creature hiding behind that plant. Nanite sap nitrogen fixation. Okay, as expected, we have a bit of a nitrogen rich atmosphere here. Cautious diet scavenged remains. We have a biological energy entity. Oh, not on the other side of that hill. It's a little tiny bipedal. Oh, <laughs> found on the planet. Uh, still, which we'll, we'll change that name. Where they roamed both forest and grassland, their movements are fidgety, darting this way and that, and their desperation to eat but not be eaten. Delicate feeders, they nibble selectively at local flora, ensuring they never entirely strip an area of foliage. They have limited sentience. Oh my. I would like one as a pet. We have this rare creature. Whoa. Cautious and deliberate... They skitter from hunt to hunt, always on the lookout for those who would steal their prey. Sneaky and opportunistic, they steal from the kills of larger predators, nipping in and making away with whatever they can. And they're genetically unstable. I'll say, look at the amalgamation of parts and pieces they have going on there. Still looking at a biological entity on the other side of the foliage here. I suppose we'll scan a few more of the shrubberies. Retractable fronds. Nutrient source is theft. Okay, well, this is a fairly interesting sort of landscape here. So we have very thick clouds. Let's let's assess. Thick thick clouds, but very calm weather. So obviously the planet is been sort of it's an older planet just basically going off of the lack of rugged exchange i mean the mountains they do have like ridge lines nope okay so it says mostly calm but we are getting a superheated rainstorm actually incoming so weather a little more volatile than the scanner first let on yep the storm is rolling in that's okay yeah, it's about the downpour. Some pretty hot rain here. So let's go ahead and respect the Viking ancient sacrifice. The beast has holy sight. Respect holy sacrifice. A portal opens on the monolith and the body of a huge winged animal falls to my feet. Its throat has been ritually cut and its wings have been tattooed with faces of an ancient warrior tribe. The eyes, though, the eyes look strange. Its original eyes have been cut out and replaced by glittering red orbs. The more I look, the more they blaze. And advanced technology clearly lies at their center. Can I bear to desecrate the sacrifice to help with my journey? No, we're just going to bow. We respect it. The ancients that dwell here smile on my show of respect. The corpse is healed, taking flight. It nears the horizon and flares with an all-consuming crimson light. As the vision ends, I am blessed. Vast showers of nanite clusters are gifted to me. Fun! Let's go! Okay. And we learned another word of the atlas. Ooh. Okay, yeah, this is a very, very hot storm. Whew. A little spicy. It's more of a steam, a steam bath than anything else. Oof. We could, we could take refuge here in the cave. Visibility is pretty limited. Do we even worry about these anymore? A gemstone formed over the course of centuries within the egg of a super incubatory species. Yeah, it doesn't it says extremely rare, but what what is the actual purpose? We don't sell for as much as they used to. It's an interesting bit of cave flora here. They're like mimicking the mineral formations. Yeah. 
but there's there seems to be a lot of uh, stalagmites, not really any stalactites. So it's almost like they're mimicking mimicking them. That's that's interesting. Okay, so it was a very short short-lived storm. Obviously, it's contributing to why a lot of the mountains look a little rounded and not entirely not entirely rigid or rocky. So this hunter appears to want to leave us alone for now. I'm inclined to say let's let it eat its kill in peace. There is something about these ridge lines, I will say that. The colors here are nice, um, but again, we're looking at sunset. Once we actually lose the sun in the sky and it turns night, I imagine it will definitely feel different. The woods are fairly minor. They're not all that large. But some of these trees are actually pretty massive. And look, they have some sort of other growth on them. That's interesting. Liquid ammonia with a spongy coating. Oh, let's switch to our better scanner. I think we know better than that. Buried treasure, fragile bulbs. Meditation, caustic sap. Look at the biodiversity in this forest. This is impressive. Also with caustic sap. Hmm. It's actually rather late considering we're still getting refraction of the sun through the atmosphere. I would expect twilight to begin at any moment. Right, so here we have sort of a change in the way things happen now. So now with these floating crystals what we get are glowing minerals. Which are precursor pieces to geodesite and, um, gosh, I'd, I've forgotten. Iridescite. Oh, why did I, why, why did I forget that? Geodesite and iridescite. Uh, these glowing minerals will give us uh, origin pieces to those, and since those are directly related to large chunks of money and or nanites, because you can process your geodesite and iridescite into nanites if you don't need it, um, we're going to actually stop and gather them real quick. There we go. And here comes the night sky. Look at the reflection on those two planets. This planet has some very interesting colors for a paradise planet. I enjoy the unique feel. Because it is absolutely unique to some of the other ones we've seen. And of course, the storms seem to be very infrequent and short-lived, and the predators generally tend to mind their own business. It looks like the clouds have relaxed a little bit for now. So maybe we'll take the Pilgrim for a spin. I think we'll stick with the mountain range for now. I see.
All right. I, I feel like we've done our due diligence and explored this planet quite a bit. I would like to name this planet. Um... Um, how about the Crimson Woods? Sure. Works for me, and let's go to the next planet. I believe there is one more planet in this system that has not seen any love. It looks just so... Oh! Oh! Water? Okay, well... Then... Wouldn't you know it, we're not quite done with this planet. <laughs> no, we're gonna punch down right on through the atmosphere and... See what this ocean is like here a little bit. Very rocky looking terrain, for sure. Well, if the planet has an ocean, then we must do at least one scan for a drowned starship. And we found one. Oh, look at the look at the coral down here. This is different. Okay, some of the, some of this coral is is a, is quite a bit different. Oh, I see. Interesting looking hauler. I think we're going to fly the Nightmare in space over to the Drowned Starship, though. Eight minutes is a bit far. Alright. So we'll skip along the surface of the water here, we'll find a local island, and then we'll resummon the Abyssal Ahew. Ahew! And then we shall... Dive the depths and, I don't know, hopefully see something grand. What a sort of economy are we looking at? Sustainable economy, that's, that's not bad. I'm not so super concerned with the class of the ship, although that is a contributing factor. It would be exceedingly nice if it were a very large inventory ship, as I believe the inventory has a lot more to do with the value when scrapping than the class does, although it all plays a factor. You know what I have not done yet? Now, I don't know why this just popped into my head. How in the heck does the Titanfaller handle the water? That's the question, right? Oh, fun! Oh yes, this is fun. Look, and we can we can just walk on the ocean floor prawn suit style, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's exciting. All right, so what kind of a ship do we have here? Five million C twenty six plus two. The reflection of death. Oh. Reflection of death. Okay, well, let's go ahead and repair the damaged machinery here, see what we get from this. Some nanites, very good, and then I think what we'll do is we'll actually pop the top on this distress beacon. A high-tech cage filled with the mangled bodies of animals lie in the cargo hold, thrown like thrown dice. 
creatures appear to be long dead, yet their fur moves unnaturally as though still alive. Could be the current. Within the cockpit, a warrior-like pilot lies sprawled on the controls, a bolt caster in its hand. The ship's data banks appear to be operational. I'd rather have the data, honestly. I accessed the ship's manifesto. Manifesto or manifest? <laughs> what the heck? The creatures were infected with a dangerous parasite. I take information on an interesting new tech before departing. Cyclotron module C. All right, well. This is pretty darn good. I think we should absolutely claim this ship, and then we'll fix it up and sell it. Alright, let's grab the Reflection of Death. A, pr a pretty neat sort of underwater section here. I like the coral and the caves and the ridge lines. I think that's... I think it's worth a shot. Okay. Now, let's... First things first, we're going to have to repair the launch thruster to get out of here. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll make a couple of these. We'll make a couple of those. Alright. So we'll get the launch thruster repaired. We're going to need some hermetic seals. Right? Oh, uh, maybe. There it is. Alright, so we'll need a few hermetic seals and metal plates. We'll get our pulse engine online. The shield is going to be a problem where we won't even make it back to the space station. Hyperdrive is not necessary. Uh, these can be scrapped for parts, and uh, we're not going to do any fighting in this ship. So no, we're just going to leave that broken. Alright, the remaining pieces here, I dare say, we're just going to deposit all of our minerals into them as we generally have too many of a given mineral at any point in time. Antimatter. Ooh. Two, three. Yep, okay. Let's see. How are we doing? Almost done. I kind of wish it was like a repair all, but that's okay. It doesn't take that long, and there we have it. Uh, is it even worth keeping these? Well, we made them, I dare say it is worth keeping them. Alright, wonderful. And of course we're going to leave the technology side of the house uh, broken because it doesn't have an impact on what we get when we turn it in. Oof, this thing is sluggish. And slow, and has like no visibility. Alright, let's line up with the space station. Get our trajectory set. Although, before we go there, I just would like to scan. Ooh. What is this unknown planet? An abandoned planet. Ho 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 ho. Nice. That'll be our next stop. I'm not sure why I enjoy taking broken down ships back to space stations to scrap them. There's something cathartic about it. I don't necessarily need the money. The nanites are beneficial. The storage space, maybe if we find another ship we really, really want to invest in. Although more than anything, I suppose we need the man, the nanites for our exploration ship. But I suppose I feel like I don't know. It's like recycling, cleaning up the simulation. I don't know. It's not really. But it kind of is. Alright. So, the ship is valued at 5.3 million. Although, I'm sure we're not going to get all of that with our trade-in. But, if we look at the Reflection of Death, uh, 3.7 million units. That's not bad. Um, 
Yeah, that's fine. Destroy all its cargo. I don't necessarily care. Ah, some hyperdrive modules. Activated cadmium. Look at that little stubby fighter. That's fun. We could just buy a bunch of ships that come in and land and just start scrapping them. Ugh. That's okay. Let's sell the modules we have that we don't really care about. I would like to sell all three of those. And then, did we put one on the freighter? No, so we did get an S-Class fleet trade unit to improve the trading abilities of my fleet. I actually... This is expedition yeah. speed. That's interesting. No, I think, I think though, if I'm being fair, we are going to install this. I don't think there's a reason to not do it. We are going to do it. Salvaged freighter module, market analysis, expedition trade ability. It has these as an adjacency bonus. Gosh, I hope it doesn't count for three total, because if it does, we're going to end up dismantling some of these. <laughs> uh, we'll see. We'll see. I'm not sure how those are going to work once we get a lot of them together, but... Uh, but it is nice fleshing out the storage here as well. Um... Let's see. Oh, gosh. And we have multi-tool upgrade station. We can upgrade the 50,000 nanites. Oh, my goodness. Uh, we actually cannot purchase any new slots here. Um, let's see. If we go to our multi-tool, we can see that this one has really good scanner range. Uh, well, it's a rifle. And then our other one is... Yeah, very high damage potential because it's mostly all weapons. That kind of makes me think, though. What about... Look at all these. Wonderful S-Class modules. Now, now, standby. Do you sell, actually, new tech? How does that work? Uh, no, you just have upgrade modules. Um, and now no ships are even arriving here at the space station. Alright, let's go look at the Galactic Trade Terminal. As I would like to sell, yep, all of these little bits and bobs for... Some money, not a lot of them. Pulpy roots, spool of nano cables, yeah, subatomic regulators, handful of cogs. All right, so all that we have left really is right. We have some living glass. That's sort of important. Here we can afford to analyze and break these down into their constituent parts. Oh, they give tritium hyperclusters, too. Isn't that interesting? I think we can afford to process this, yeah, for a minute. I can deal with that for a minute. The pulpy roots. Yep, go there. We just keep stockpiling these minerals. We'll be able to keep a permanent supply of geodesite and iridesite, and then, of course, we'll also keep our keep our inventory nice and clear, which is what we want. So the living glass goes there. I don't know if I'm at a position where I'm ready to mess with that, so we'll just put it on the, uh, on the freighter for the, for the moment. And then these. These were a bit of a waste of materials. We don't really need them. Okay. We didn't really get any storage modules, and we didn't really get a lot of nanites either. I almost think if they uh, 
the Atlas has somehow reduced and nerfed our capability to make a profit trading in ships. I don't know. I don't know. But let's head over to this abandoned planet and see what we can get here. Abandoned. Very interesting. High Sentinel activity. Beautiful looking ocean, even from far away. Land masses appear to be few and far between. Mostly a large island chain. Nope, nope, that was reflection of the light in the atmosphere. They're actually much more significant size continents tied together with vast oceans. I think what we really need is kind of a center of landmass here, a little away from where the water is. And then we can change gears once we head over there. Oh. Okay, yep. Some mountains. <laughs> Pretty fun. Not incredibly rugged, just lots of elevation changes. Kind of smooth slopes here and there. A good bit of sand layered on top of most of them. Oof, and despite there being a lot of water on the planet's surface, the air feels very dry. A lot of cacti. A lot. And look at these odd megalithic formations down here. What is that? Obviously some sort of man-made structure. Fossilized over time? Yeah, I'm not sure. Let's, let's settle down here. I think despite being in the middle of all these mountains where we want to be is sort of, yeah, right here on the little this little floodplain here. Are these cacti or mushrooms? It's like some combination of both. Nutrient source meditation. I say meditation. Geological energy for an en for an en for a nutrient source. No, this is a cactus huh just uh, a little unique a little peculiar oh it's very hot oh my it's actually very hot on the surface of this desert planet that's a little uncommon most desert planets are reasonable during the day I wonder if that means at night it won't be cold Normally, desert planets are temperate during the day and cold at night to where they reduce your your cold uh, hazard protection. I'm interested now. This seems like a job for the... Oh, no. <laughs> that's, that's not the correct one. This seems like a job for the Azure Spark. Although I'm tempted. Do we have anything in our Colossus? Oh, yeah. Look at all this. Pulse engine module, pulse engine module, Gecknip, look at all this star silk. What have we done with our lives? I uh, I don't think this stuff needs to stay in here. I'm just going to throw that out there. I think we can safely pull all this stuff out. Oh, I meant to buy more X-Class modules at the space station. Drat. All right, we'll put that in high capacity storage. We'll process this into dihydrogen. We'll put that in the high capacity storage. Okay, bottom two rows of inventory have been cleared out. Uh, however, the Exocraft. Shame, shame, know your name. Hiding all this, oh. Oh, this is rare elf earth element. Oh, this isn't even, this isn't even a thing anymore. This has no value. Yeah, there's nothing you can do with that anymore. It's completely worthless.
Look at the white, sandy... Sandy little area here as the sun goes down. And the sky is so clear and devoid of moisture. There's like hardly any. Alright, the sun's going down, but the temperature does not appear to be going down. It's still... It's still hot. Oh my! Yeah. It's hot enough for spontaneous fires to break out. Makes me think this planet is in the middle of a massive change. The oceans are probably drying up, so if the moisture is accelerating into the air and then not falling back down. I could explain how we saw in the other episode the planet that used to be underwater and was completely dry. Four minutes to cruise the surface of this planet? I can accept those terms. Let's run across the surface of the water here and make a few observations. So the bioluminescence underwater seems to be reflective more than um, being self-generated. That's no problem reflecting when we shine our light on it and it glows actually quite bright, but none of it is glowing of its own accord, so... I think this is a pretty good place to get another navigational data, because we're going to need to turn these in for a lot of commercial charts. We've, we've spent a lot of our commercial charts, actually. And then we can always fix some damaged machinery fairly easily... I don't really care about the living slime. Not in a small amount like that. We're not going to get it with any amount of frequency. Yeah, a few nanites. A few of them. It's it's probably worth just poking our head in and, and seeing them. I think we'll stick with the Azure Spark for now because we have this water that we need to traverse. Look at the night sky though. It's this deep, deep sort of violet. And there's like not a cloud in the sky. Uh, uh, well, one, one here and there. Hardly any at all. The terrain here has an interesting formation. It sort of goes this, this whole flat little floodplain basin, and then boom, and then we're like mountains. All right, well, we're going to charge up our hazard shielding, and then we'll charge up the fuel. All right, let's climb the mountain. Ooh, oh. Oh, hello. Look at this sort of cave. Oh, my. Boom. What an interesting cave. It drops down and it goes straight into the water. It's almost a, I don't want to say like a, a straight vertical drop, but gosh, it's darn near it. Hold on. Let's get to where we can look a little, a little better at the opening here. Yeah, look at this. It's a little pocket to, oh, 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 what are we there? Another shelter. That's not where we came from, is it? No. Interesting cave formation. Ooh! Living rocks, these are always fun.
Organic rocks. I'm sorry, not living rocks, but organic rocks. Oof, another area of the planet has caught fire. It's not even incredibly hot, it just shows you how dry the air is. Mordite? Where, where are we with Mordite? We actually could use some. Very good. Alright, I think at this point we need to take the pilgrim and just throw ourselves up the mountain here. And we're fairly close to the monolith at this point. But we're always wanting to learn more language. Yeah, look at that. It's just like a little, like an oasis. A literal oasis in a desert, desert mountain planet with very little water. But that's just because we're inland, right? Because if you, if you were up here, look, and there's, and the mountains keep going. You could almost completely, completely be forgiven for not realizing that this that this wasn't the uh, the surface. Oof! Oh my! Wow! I don't know if we've ever seen a desert planet that was this hot without an active burning sandstorm before. Oh look! We've made contact with some fauna. Processes dirt. Well insulated. Gosh, I would hope. then it must maintain a cool body temperature to be so insulated from the heat. Fermented fruit. Interesting. I don't think we're going to feed the animals here, though. All right, the Viking word for new. Feed the beast. Honor the ancients. Companion beast of blank is our is blank. Good beast. Feed it. <laughs> the giant mouth of an ancient hound suddenly emerges through the face of the monolith. It opens its jaws wide and foul-smelling spittle streaks my visor. My nausea is tempered by the sight of valuable commodities balanced on its giant tongue. Now let's feed it. The hound swallows my offerings and licks me enthusiastically. Okay, the vision fades and I'm blessed by an ancient power. Will we ever get to speak to the Atlas again? To make these these words of the Atlas matter? I really don't know. I don't. I think this is probably pretty good for this planet. It's interesting. But as far as desert planets go, it's not really a desert planet, is it? It kind of is, it's kind of not. It's way too hot, it has an ocean, it's drying up. Who knows? Maybe after a few million years it'll be like the other planet we found, with coral all over the surface. Look at these mountains, though. It's nice because they're very sloped. Not as sandy as I would like. So I almost wish if it was like massive sand dunes. That would almost be more fun. Um, but all in all, fairly entertaining. I think we can agree that this planet is... The... Uh, burning sands. I mean, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Oof, I don't even know. That seems a little too on the nose, right? 
the searing sands. Sure. I'm good with that. And I think we'll call our, uh, our capital ship, the Relentless, in. We'll go ahead and dock, and we'll get ready for our next system to explore in the next episode. But until then, take care.